And that is what? That is the sound of a neuron firing. It's astonishing that we've got 100 billion little wisps of jelly in your head called neurons, and it's the activities of these neurons, the flux of ions across them, the passage of current, that is life. <laughs> you know, what we call our mental life, our thoughts, our ideas, our ambitions, our passions, our fear of death, our love life, everything, even what you think of as your own intimate self, you, is the activity of these little specks of jelly. This is the greatest realization in the last hundred years. In a sense, it's obvious when stated in that, in that manner. But mm -hmm. not all brains can do what he just described. What makes you think that? Now, let me introduce you to Julian Keenan. He works at Montclair State University. Talked to him recently. He told me this story of many years ago, his mentor, Gordon Gallup, did an experiment. He took a bunch of chimpanzees, put them in a room with a mirror where they could see their own reflection. When he did, this is what happened. At first, they would attack the mirror. They started beating their chest and started threatening it as if the animal in the mirror was another chimpanzee. But then slowly, over the course of tens of minutes, the chimp began to say, wait a minute, this guy's doing exactly what I'm doing. Wasn't there something about them sticking their butts on the mirror too? <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that going on, and they would show you all the signs that they knew that that was them in the mirror. That, uh, wait, how, did they know, how does a chimp know that the image in the mirror is the chimp? Couldn't like, he be thinking... Oh, let's just bash butts with that other chimp right well, next Well, it certainly looked to the scientists like the monkey was checking out its own butt and not the butt of what it thought was another monkey. But yes, you're right. This is anecdotal. How do you prove it? And that, says Julian, is where a clever little technique called the Mark Test comes in. My mentor, Gordon Gallup, one day he was shaving. And as he turned away from the mirror, I think there was a spot of shaving cream left on his face. And as he was wiping it off, he wondered, would a chimp do the same thing? In other words, would the chimp look at the mirror and think, hmm, that guy sure does look like me, moves like me, maybe that creature is me. If that guy has a spot on his face, maybe I have a spot on my face. Mm. To test this, to see if chimps can recognize themselves, they did an experiment. So you knock them out, you give them some anesthesia, uh, a half hour, you knock them out, and while they're unconscious, you just paint a red mark on top of their forehead. Wait for them to wake up, and then you put them in front of a mirror again. And there is the test. The chimp wakes up with a spot on its head, sees the spot on the monkey in the mirror, stares, and then touches the spot on its own head. I mean, the typical thing that it will do is it will wipe the mark and then smell. What is that? Is that food? Is that tree sap? And that was clear evidence that these chimpanzees recognize themselves. Oh my god, that's pretty interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. Especially if you think about what the chimp is doing. It's creating a representation of itself that floats free of its body. That over there is the same thing